brutal, without mercy. But you, you will be worse. Rid and tear until it is done. How's it going everyone? Hope you're all having an awesome day. It's been a while since Doom Eternal has been released and by now most of us have put a ton of hours into it and mastered the mechanics. With that being said, how would playing Doom 2016 be like after mastering Eternal? Both games have accomplished great things in terms of mechanics, lore, and gameplay, so in this video I wanted to discuss some of the major differences between both games and what it's like to play Doom 2016 after several months of not even touching it. If you are new here and love Doom and similar games, consider subscribing and set up notifications to stay up to date with the channel. I still want to keep pushing for that 50,000 subscriber goal, so hopefully you'll stick around if you like what you see here. I appreciate all the support on the channel and hope to continue uploading new videos consistently. Alright, let's get going. Doom Eternal gives players the ability to master the skills of first person shooters. It can help you with resource management, accuracy, and many other skills needed to be successful. A while ago I uploaded a video talking about how Doom Eternal made me a better player, and honestly it really has changed the way I play first person shooters. A lot of veteran quick players tend to jump around a ton as a way to not only get around faster, but to use it to their advantage when fighting another player by making it harder to be killed. Doom Eternal allows you to move around a ton more than Doom 2016 by the use of the dash and double jump being accessible in earlier levels. Once you play Doom Eternal enough times, it's difficult to get adjusted to Doom 2016 in terms of maneuverability. While playing 2016, I would try to push my shift key, thinking I could dash out of the way of a pinky charging right at me. It didn't go as planned. I did of course move around a lot better in terms of bunny hopping to avoid projectiles and other attacks by the demons. The use of the air control rune makes all of the difference in both games. When I first played Doom 2016, I never really had a use for it until after playing Doom Eternal. Being able to dodge in mid-air against the attacks of a Doom Hunter will immediately have you sold on the rune. Of course, going back to 2016 and using the rune helps me a lot more than it did in the past. When it comes to moving around, I would say that Doom Eternal obviously makes it more of a priority, and once you get accustomed to it, then jumping into 2016 will make you untouchable. Speed is the game, and id Software raised the bar with Eternal, not only with maneuverability, but with the game itself. One major thing would be how the Slayer dies. In Doom Eternal, if you fall out of bounds, you will just lose some health and get put back at the checkpoint almost immediately. In 2016, you would die, then get put back to the checkpoint, which would have a loading screen. For those who just want to get through the level and not have to deal with too many mistakes, Eternal helps with that. However, when it comes to the Slayer dying with the demons, Eternal took the easy way out. If you die in Eternal, you basically explode, and then it goes to a loading screen. In 2016, you would oftentimes have a demon do a glory kill on you. Doom 2016 had some awesome glory kills that the demons could do to the Slayer. Some of my favorites were when the Revenant would rip off the Slayer's arms, then beat him with one of them. Or when the Baron of Hell would rip off half of the Slayer's body. And of course, if you died by a zombie, you would then see them eating pieces off of you. So I would have to give it to Doom 2016 for having a better death animation for the Slayer over Doom Eternal. Now I could imagine all of those who have died doing Ultra Nightmare runs seeing themselves get glory killed countless times could be one of the reasons id Software wanted to tone down the death animations. I'm not sure which is worse, being glory killed a ton or hearing King Novik's voice. Either way, both games were able to keep the Terminator death scene at least. The weapons in Doom Eternal haven't really changed too much compared to Doom 2016. Most of the weapons carried over even their mods as well. However, the biggest changes would be the amount of ammo and usefulness of each weapon. Eternal opened up the options of weak points which 2016 didn't have. However, you could still fall to a demon in 2016, but I think it is a lot more noticeable in Eternal. Doom Eternal gives more options for faltering such as damaging the weak points, using rockets and grenades, and using the microwave mod among other things. On top of that, for damaging weak points, you would get that satisfying ping sound. The mortally challenged have entered the compound. Evacuation is advised. In terms of new weapons in Eternal, we only really got the Crucible, Unmaker, Equipment Launcher, and Doomblade, but then of course lost the pistol. 2016's pistol wasn't the best, but it did help in the earlier missions when ammo was in short supply, or for faltering and or staggering fodder demons. Eternal did have a pistol, but then of course it was taken out. 
Talking about ammo, well, once you get past the first few levels in 2016, the chainsaw becomes almost forgettable. 2016 has so much ammo and after upgrading the ammo all of the way, it becomes so useless to use other weapons or even worry so much about resource management. The nice thing is you get a lot more fuel for the chainsaw, but if you already have a ton of ammo, why use it? This was a big wake up call for a lot of 2016 players as well as new players to the franchise when they first played Eternal. I remember a lot of people complaining about the lack of ammo and having to always use the chainsaw. The modern Doom games are all about mastering the mechanics and being able to adjust your strategy at will. If you can't do that, then these games may not actually be for you. Other than that, one thing I had to get used to again with the chainsaw is that you need to equip it first before using it unlike in Eternal. Coming back to 2016, I had to learn the hard way and basically gave an imp an awkward hug before realizing I had to get the chainsaw out first, then I could use it. It's interesting how Eternal decided to make the chainsaw usable by only pressing its dedicated button, which helps a lot, although the current no target bug does complicate things at the moment. Besides that, the chainsaw kills look a lot better in 2016 in my opinion. Its animation was faster, but still gave you a little breather in between combat. Eternal's chainsaw is a bit slow, but the devs have already explained their reasoning for it, which is basically to give you an extra break in between combat. Another thing that is actually better in 2016 is no doubt the Berserk power-up. Eternal's version is first of all not really available, except for like one time in Arc Complex and another in the Super Gore Nest Master Level. Whereas in 2016 you could use it multiple times throughout the campaign. The death animations were also way more violent in 2016 and didn't take so much time to kill each demon. Eternal's version has almost the same kind of kill for each demon and would almost be boring to use. It's possible that id Software didn't want to have the Berserk power up in Eternal as frequently as 2016, considering Eternal is more challenging and the power up would break the game. Other than that, something that almost breaks the game is being able to use weapon quick switching in 2016. Of course, many skilled players were able to pull that off a long time ago, but for players who have recently been able to understand the mechanics better and overall have more confidence using it can finally have a better experience in 2016. Before Eternal, I couldn't really get the whole quick switching down, so I had to resort to using one weapon more often than other weapons. For one thing, I wasn't in the fun zone and playing the harder difficulties was almost impossible to play. However, now that I can do quick switching, going back to 2016 makes it almost too easy. I can now do effective combos on all of the demons, especially the barons and cyber mancubi. Those heavy demons do a lot of damage, but by doing quick switching you can delete them as if they weren't even a challenge to begin with. I used to get really nervous when fighting the barons, but now they are way easier than the barons in Eternal by a long shot. Being able to switch between weapons is helpful, but also being able to switch between your mods will make all the difference as well. Doom Eternal really expanded more on the importance of weapon mods especially with the Ancient Gods where you would be forced to use the Microwave mod for the Spirit. It doesn't really matter much with which mods you use in 2016, but since most of the useful mods in Eternal were in 2016, it's not too difficult to use them. Of course, there are some weapon mods that are a bit different, like the Grenade Launcher on the Combat Shotgun is not a sticky grenade, the Plasma Gun Stun Bomb is basically the Microwave mod, and there's no shield on the Chain Gun, among other mods. So the mods in 2016 would pretty much be used according to your playstyle and you wouldn't be punished for it. Whereas Eternal starting out, you'll definitely want to invest in a sticky grenade, precision bolt, lock-on burst, and heat wave in the early levels. For the most part, I think most of us can agree that those mods are very useful in dealing with the weak points and gradually understanding the mechanics of Eternal. After that, you can challenge yourself more like under the mayo and come up with brawler mode to really push yourself. Something that I also wanted to mention was how much I missed the gauze cannon. That weapon really packs a punch, but its mods weren't the best for the most part. Siege mode was very helpful to use, but not until you fully upgraded it so you can move around while charging it up. Anytime you sit still is an opportunity for a demon to take you out. You have to constantly keep moving. Without upgrading that mod, you are basically a sitting duck. Precision Bolt, well, that one was useless in my opinion. Thankfully that was moved to the Heavy Cannon in Eternal, and nothing makes me happier than using a quick scope across the map or hitting a Maker Drone or Blood Maker. Other than that, I think Eternal wins this category with the Ballista. Both of the mods are super useful, and I use them both all of the time. Plus, who doesn't want to shoot a Sentinel weapon that was designed specifically for killing demons? The demons in both games have shown us what each new Doom game is capable of doing in terms of the tech engine, their design, and effectiveness against the Doom Slayer. Doom 2016 really set the bar high with how the demons interact with the Slayer, with other demons, 
and what strategy would be best to use against them. Compared to a lot of other games out there, the AI in the modern Doom games blow me away. The fact that the demons are like chess pieces and only certain ones will pressure you, making openings to other demons, and even flanking you without you even noticing. 2016 introduced us to this kind of playstyle and was updated even more with Eternal. For instance, in 2016, the Kaka demons would tend to keep their distance while shooting their fireballs and eventually attempting to bite you when they were close enough. In Eternal, they would shoot multiple fireballs, move faster, and would overall be more aggressive. On top of that, in 2016, you couldn't stagger them with shooting a sticky grenade or a grenade in their mouth. You had to dispose of them the old-fashioned way with some good old lead poisoning. The Mancubi in 2016 wore more of a bullet sponge versus their counterpart in Eternal where you could blow off their arm cannons. Even the Barons of Hell were a bit different where they would throw fast and charged up green Argen fireballs and do some ground slams. The Barons in Eternal were basically the same but had more health and a little bit more aggressive in my opinion. All in all, my experience of jumping back into Doom 2016, I experienced almost the same combat with minor changes between the two games. Something to make note of was my first encounter with the shield guy in 2016 after playing Eternal was that plasma doesn't make the shield explode. For some reason, I thought I could do that, but immediately realized how dumb I was. Those guys are a lot more of a pain in 2016, but with the right strategy, you can take them out quickly. Another big change though was the use of gore nests in 2016 which prompted a lot of the arena fights and oftentimes required you to finish the fight before moving on. Eternal just wiped out that idea but used the gore nests for optional challenging arenas which would unlock the unmaker after beating them all. Like I mentioned before, if you understand the mechanics and are able to use quick switching effectively then by all means Doom 2016's demons will have no chance against you. Now I just need to play the next Doom game so I can play Eternal and beat it on Ultra Nightmare with ease. When it comes down to it, both games have a lot in common and have a ton of pros and cons. Some people might think that Doom 2016 is better than Eternal, and others may think Eternal is superior. In my opinion, I think both games are great. Eternal was built upon a lot of the best things from 2016, but in the end failed at a few things that only 2016 could do better. Id Software isn't done with the Doom franchise, and they haven't made their best Doom game yet, so who knows, maybe the next game will surpass both 2016 and Eternal. Other than that, my experience jumping back into 2016 was refreshing and worthwhile in terms of letting me know how much I have improved in my skills. What about you guys? Have you jumped back into 2016 and noticed a lot of changes or improvements in your skills? Let me know down in the comment section. I hope you all enjoyed my analysis of the two games. Obviously, I didn't cover everything like the lore between the two games or even the functionality, which may end up being another video, who knows. Besides that, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, check out my social media accounts at Rip and Tear Gaming as well as my Discord channel. That's always a great place to continue the conversation outside of YouTube. Thank you all for the support, and until next time, be safe, and don't forget to rip and tear. Peace.